This video will demonstrate more extensive use of arrays in Parson Studio. We continue on the simple model of arrays. In a simple model, we can reset the model, change the inputs, and run the model to see three different behaviors running 38 years with different interest rates into three different bank accounts. With this model, if I want to change this to two elements in place of three, then I have to start here and change the dimension. It is currently defined as one dot dot three, giving three elements starting on one, ending on three. If I change this to, for instance, uh, going from two to three, then this variable is okay defined. There's no question mark, but there's a question mark on the value because it is not reset yet. When resetting, we get the value here, but this one is not well defined because I still have three elements here. When doing the same change here, going from two to three, then we see we have a working model. Again, I can do some changes here and run model and I see the two different results. Also note that this variable did not need any change of the definition because it has automatic dimensions automatically giving the dimension two to three on this one because both these input variables, they have this dimension. You should, as far as it is possible, keep the automatic check mark on for as many variables as possible. Still, in this model, actually more than half the variables, they have specially defined dimensions. It is the level and the interest rate. They are both directly defined. So if I want to change this, I have to do it in both these variables. So I want to do this in a more efficient way. I would like to do this from a global point. That can easily be done by entering the global ranges window. Currently, we have no global ranges. By right clicking, I can say I want to add a range, sit this, and here I can choose, in this case, I choose the default numerical sub range. I say I will go from one to three. Now I define cities as one to three, and I go back to my diagrams. Inside these variables, I can define this as cities. If doing that on both of these, then you see the model is again defined well, and I can run it with all these trenches. Now, to change these dimensions, I can do that on one location, not needing to go into every variable. But a city usually has a name, not city one, two, and three. Another benefit of using global ranges is that you can use an enumeration for each element. I will show how to do that. We go back to the cities, and I say I want this to be an enumeration range. Then I can add the cities I want. After defining the elements, you see the definition of this range is now London, Paris and New York. If you have a space, it will automatically add these single quotes. You can also have a list of the elements by clicking the plus. Then we can go back and look at the model. We reset the model again and you see now we can run the model with the names of the cities, both in the auto reports and on the legends for the graphs and other controls. Now the model has become much more user-friendly. Each time we reset this model, you see it jumps back to 5% per year. So also in this case, we can make it permanent by going on advanced like this. Then you will see that the value of the input will not change every time we run or reset the model. This one also takes a bit more space now, so we can rearrange a bit on, uh, on this to get a bit more space for it. What if we have 200 lines like this? Then it would look really crowded here. In that case, I would like to have some other kinds of input and some other kinds of output. To do that, we can use so-called index variables. In a list of ranges, you can also define something related to ranges called index variables. To do that, you will need the advanced user interface. To gain that, you need to right click anywhere on the toolbar, then choose advanced on the resource user interface. 
I close some of these windows then you see when right clicking we have more options than just adding a range we can also add an index variable that is not a range it's a single variable with the ability to choose for instance one of these elements so I call this chosen city you could call it selected city whatever normally it's an alias range of one of your ranges so now this chosen city will have a value equal to one of these cities. So when going back to the diagram, it has moved now since we have the advanced user interface. When going back here, I have the ability to put a control for this variable. We normally use a switch control for index variables. So here I can double click this one saying I want an index variable. I want the chosen city. When we have a few elements, it's by default a radio button. But so far, I don't use this index variable anywhere. I can change it, but I'm not using it. First, I would like now a slider as input to my interest rate. Because I don't want two or three hundred bars like this. So I make a normal slider. And in place of dragging this parameter using the left mouse button, I use the right mouse button to drag this one. I drag it to the slider and I say I want to paste a special parameter here. And in this case, I want to use the chosen city. Not London, not Paris, but the one I have chosen in the index variable. So now, you see, I can change this one. Now I'm changing New York because that's my chosen city. If I choose Paris, I can change Paris and so on. Of course, this would not work with a list of 200 cities. So I would normally use a combo box in this case. Then I can choose it like this and I get a list with scroll bar if necessary. So the Paris value can be changed here. Of course, I can still change it here if desired. Then you see Paris is also changed on the slider while these ones will be invisible on the slider. So the same thing you can do with the time graph. I go in here, I delete these existing parameters and I say I want to view the bank value of the chosen city. I can double click it or click this add to parameters list button. If I choose another city I will see the other graphs here. Now you see by default it's rescaling when I change to another city. In some cases you may want to compare them in an easier way. So you can choose on the value axis that the auto scale source should not be the history of the variable but the variable itself meaning you're looking at all the elements in the variable. So now New York is the highest one. If I choose London you see it's much lower. I can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to change these values. I can easily go between them. So now we can easily add a new city without changing anything in the user interface. You can right click here, say add element and add a new city. Going back to the diagrams and you see we have the last city. So, so far we have a working model. But if I want to add 200 cities, it is a bit inconvenient doing that. Even if it's easy to say here, add element and so on, we may want to use another kind of range. By double clicking here, I can say I want to use an Excel range that's available for the enterprise version. To use that, I need an Excel file. For instance, this one. Here I have a list of cities, three cities, in a sheet named lists. The file is called simulation data. So I want to read from A2 and downwards, I want to read the names for my range. Going back here, I can look for this file. If it is on the same directory as my SIP file, I can open it directly. Then it will give me a list of the sheets. So in this case, I want the lists and I want the A2. I also need to say this is a vertical direction 
for this list and it's an extended one. It starts on A2 and then continues until we get an empty cell. Saying OK to that, I no longer have a list here of my defined cities because it's defined somewhere else. It's defined in Excel. So when going to the model, you'll see I have the three cities that we have defined in Excel. Also Doha and Madrid. And now of course it's much easier to add many cities. I can paste them from another site. And of course I want to relate this to data as well. Reset the model. It can change it here or change it using this one. Then run the model and we can watch the different cities. Very simple. So if I want to add Rio here, just say I add Rio like this. Save the model, go in here and reset it. Then Rio is a part of my range. I can set it here and run the model. Very easy. For a model like this, I think it's inconvenient to press the run button each time. So we convert it to a time series model. Say my series resolution should be one year. This must be a starter value. Reset model and now, now I don't need to press the run button. Thank you for watching.